All right. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on the VISM interface overview. So I'm going to be presenting this uh, for my screen. Uh, you can follow along uh, on your own on your on your own side as well. Later on, when we get into the actual review portion, uh, we're going to be working with a specific model, um, and and you can definitely open that up and and follow along as well. Hopefully, uh, later on, we'll depending on the pace, we can do a little bit more hands on as well of um, getting into the actual model and reviewing elements of it as well. So I'm going to open up uh, Visim real quick. And uh, in this model, we have an I-70 uh, sample model that was provided by uh, Missouri DOT. And what we've done is we've gone through, and I haven't edited the model or anything like that. I just made sure that um, all of the simulation data was there and things like that. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying graphic overlays and things like that to the model itself to help us with our review process. So that's mostly what we're going to be doing. We're not necessarily going to be getting in and making any uh, changes or edits to the model as we go. So overviewing uh, what the interface looks like. To start out, this is going to be your generic over uh, interface, what it's going to look like. There are going to be a few different elements that I want to point out when you first open vSIM. And I'm going to be using vSIM 2022. Um, but uh, the interface is going to look very similar for pretty much all versions that you're going to be using. To start, uh, when you first open uh, the model, up in the upper corner, it'll tell you what project uh, you're working on, what the name of the file is, as well as what version of vSIM you are currently loaded into um, in terms of what... Uh, version you're you're viewing the model in this is important because uh as we release new versions every year or with with new um features and things like that we'll also be releasing service packs every couple of months uh for bug fixes and, and minor updates like that and that can depending on the bug fix uh, might adjust the calibration and things like that. So if somebody's built and calibrated a model in a specific version of vSIM, and then you open it up in a newer version where maybe some things have changed in the background calculations, your, your results might differ just a little bit. Generally not too much, but um, there might be some minor differences. So it's important that uh, when you are having a, proj a vSIM project, you are building it and reviewing it all in the same uh, service pack and version. Uh, another trick that you can do when looking at a model, so I'll, I'm going to open up the um, uh, working directory. So this is uh, the directory. I sent out a link yesterday in the emails. So you should be able to have this if you've downloaded it already. If not, uh, uh, you, can, you can find it and download it now. But when you open up a vSIM model, there's going to be a .inpx file. And that's the file that we're going to be looking at here. So we have this project name. In this case, it's the i70 St. Church DB existing PM. Here we have uh, that model right here with a .inpx extension. What you can actually do if you're not sure what version it was built in, you can right click on it and say open with a uh, notepad or a text editor or something like that and when you open that file in that text editor um, the first thing you're going to see up at the top of the up at the top of the list right here is the version it was created in so you see here we have vsim version and in this case uh, it was most recently saved in version 2022 service pack 5. You see uh, uh, this 2022-5. So that's the best way to check what version it was built in. Um, and generally, that's going to be taken care of in the scoping of the project. You'll discuss with the consultant who uh, uh, what versions you're, you're accepting and, and things like that. Um, just because you don't want to, you don't want to, you want to make sure that you guys are operating on kind of the same grounds there. Moving right along, um, some of the other windows that we have on the left side of our screen 
we're going to see our list of network objects. Uh, each one of these is kind of like an object layer, as if you're in some sort of CAD software. Um, you know, I, I like to think of these as different layers. Um, so you have different objects that are going to be placed within your network. There's going to be a button that is highlighted in gray on the left side. That's the on off switch. Um, so you can graphically turn on and turn off different layers. That doesn't mean that they're not in use by the simulation. It just means visually they're not displayed. And then on the right side, we have a graphic settings button, a graphic parameters button where you can go in and you can change visually what they look like, what kind of information are they displaying. And this is going to be important because what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to be using these graphic parameters to help display different types of data to quickly review the model rather than having to go through each object individually. Um, down below the network editor, we have our objects lists. So when we each of these objects in the network editor has uh, each one of those layers has a different listing which lists out each one of the individual objects and key attributes about that object. Um, so in the list, what we'll see are uh, some of the columns will be in white. Those are editable attributes and some of them will be gray. Those are calculated attributes. So if you're looking at things like inputs, um, those are going to be white and outputs will be gray. Um, so, so that's a clear distinction as to how you can tell the difference between an input versus an output. Then we have our network editor. This is the main window that we're going to be using. This is where you're going to actually be able to see the, the simulation model as well as all of the objects within the model. Uh, one thing I want to point out is up in the upper left corner of the interface, there's going to be a drop down menu and what we've done is we've gone ahead and taken the reviewers checklist and we've created a list of preset graphic overlays to help walk us through um, our checklist that we're going to be going through over the course of this of this training um, so that every time you open a file, you can open up this particular graphic overlay set and it'll basically be uh, the checklist uh, rebuilt within within vSIM. And if we look at that in the actual model uh, example files, down at the bottom you'll see this modot uh, reviewers checklist dot layx. This is a layout file which gives us this list. So all you'll have to do is just open that up and that can be opened on any uh, vSIM project that you receive. So you should always be able to have this, this preset drop-down list on the left. And we're going to be using that uh, quite heavily over the course of this training. One other thing to point out is we have the legend in the lower right. Uh, this will display various graphic overlays and things like that for us and give us some more information on what we're looking at. All right, the last little bit I want to point out is down at the very bottom, there's going to be a messages window. And this is going to be important for determining uh, what is going right and what is going wrong with our simulation that we may have received. Now in vSIM, there are two types of messages that you'll get. One is a red X um, that is an error. And these uh, show simulation breaking errors. So these are things that would come up if you see a red X, that means that vSIM cannot run a simulation because something is wrong. You're missing a file or, um, you know, something is broken within the model itself. Uh, if you see the yellow exclamation point, that is a, a potential warning. That doesn't mean that there's necessarily a simulation breaking error. It means that there's something missing or something uh, that could cause weird behavior that you might want to investigate further. So for example, if we see these messages right now, it says that we're missing a couple car models. And that's not simulation breaking because it remembers the geometry of those vehicles. It's just visually, you won't see a car, you'll see like a, a box driving around if you were to jump into 3D mode. Um, so, so that's kind of the difference between the red X and the yellow exclamation point. Generally, the yellow exclamation point is okay, but it, it'll require further investigation to make sure that it's not messing with your model too much. Um, whereas if you get the red X, that's a simulation breaking error and that'll be something that you'll want to resolve unless 
in order to run the simulation. 